Hello everyone. Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. In today's lecture, we are going to continue with our fourth chapter of VTH that is vehicle performance testing. Under this particular chapter, we had already understood the concept of energy consumption in the case of automobile. We understood that the different components is using different different amount of energies. These are the wastage of energy which can be improved. Later on, we had seen that these are the different gases which has been coming out from the automobile. Now, in the today's lecture, we will be focusing on this particular performance part and the testing part of the automobile. When you talk about this performance testing, the major test which comes in our mind is about the gradability test, steering test, turning circle diameter test. These are the some of the tests which we are going to elaborate in detail in our today's lecture. So, let's begin with that. The first concept that is a gradability. Gradability is actually a term for the indication of highest grade a vehicle can ascend. This is to be find out while designing a vehicle. We need to evaluate that how much hilly area at what particular angle of slope the vehicle can ascend, right? But in this particular gradability test, we are actually testing that particular designed part. We will check that, say for example, 30 degree of grade has been find out that this vehicle can ascend. Then naturally we will check in this particular uh, practical setup that whether it is uh, uh, traveling that 30 degree slope or not, right? Whenever they are designing a vehicle, they require this particular data. This gradability is depending on this three different terms. That is a theta, that how much vehicle is required to be, angle of slope required to be ascend. WT, that is a weight of vehicle as recorded. If you are taking it for a test purpose, then how much weight you are keeping on that and the weight of the vehicle, that is a WT weight. And WR is the gross vehicle weight of the vehicle. If you are having this three different value, you can find out the gradability in the form of percentage, right? That this much slope percentage can be achieved. But gradability can also be defined in the terms of a rise over run. Say for example, if 10 meter uh, span is there and slope is of, um, say for example, any degree 10 to 20 degree, but at that time rise, that's vertical region, is considered as a rise, right? Two meter rise is there, 10 meter run is there, then it is having a gradability is can be written as a 2 is to 10, right? That rise over run is 2 is to 10. In that way, can, uh, also gradability has been defined. But here the main intention is to find out as per the design condition, vehicle is ascending a weak grade or not, right? Now let us understand the next theory that is a turning circle diameter. This turning circle diameter is actually indicating the value of maximum space a vehicle is requiring whenever it is taking a turn. In this particular test, we just need to uh, steer the vehicle extremely to the left and need to take a 360 degree turn. Either you can do that or you can take a steer extremely towards right and take a full 360 degree turn. Now at the ground level, we will be having one full complete circle. The diameter of that particular circle is nothing, but it is a turning circle diameter. Still, let us have a 3D look of that. Suppose if it is a vehicle which is taking a turn, which has been extremely taken on the left, it is extremely steered left and we are getting a full circle. The diameter of that circle is nothing, but it is a turning circle diameter. Now, we need to think about how to find out the turning circle diameter. In order to get the value of that turning circle diameter during a design phase itself, it is actually depending on the two different quantities. That is a width of the vehicle and the steering angle. From the side view, you can get the width of the vehicle and from this top view, if you are taking extremely steering towards left, and the steering angle, this is indicated with the help of alpha here. So if this two quantities are being known, you can find out easily this turning circle diameter, right? But our ultimate practical aim would be there that this turning circle diameter, which has been recorded or in the design part is matching with our practical setup or not, right? We will take a full 360 degree turn and we will physically measure the diameter of that, right? But Right now understand that it is depending on capital W and the uh, alpha value. 
but how it is wind dependent let us understand with the help of this diagram we are getting this full circle over here right this full circle has been there this front wheel and the rear wheel has been indicated in the diagram from the center of the circle the wheel axis of the front wheel that distance has been indicated with the help of capital r and the rear wheel center and the center of the circle has been indicated as small r the naturally the distance between front and rear wheel would be indicated with the help of capital w value now if we apply trigonometry over here naturally sin alpha would be capital w by small r tan alpha would be equal to capital w by small r this would if we equate in the form of r value capital r would be equal to w by sin alpha small r would be equal to w by tan alpha so from this you can have a look that if we want to find out this radius or the diameter of the particular turning circle naturally we need to have a control over the width of the vehicle as well as the steering if these two quantities are known you can find out the radius of the turning circle and from the radius you're doubling the radius of that you can find out the turning circle diameter okay that's all about the turning circle diameter part now let us understand the steering impact test the steering impact test is actually a test which is related under the crash category right whenever the crest happens or the frontal collision happens of the vehicle how much uh, effort or the impact of the steering on the chest part has been evaluated under this scenario we are keeping a steering wheel uh, on the steering rod right and one dummy would be placed and at the chest part the load sensor would be mounted right the impact would be given to this particular dummy on the steering pad at certain uh, speed right and we need to find out how much load is being faced on the particular chest region from that we can evaluate that the chances of um, injury is this percentage with the help of this steering impact test right the next is the steering effort test this test is somewhat different uh, from with respect to the steering impact test in this particular steering effort test we are evaluating that how much effort is required in order to steer the particular steering wheel right but it is very easy way to find out the steering effort what we actually require to do is we need to remove this particular steering wheel from the steering column we will remove that steering wheel and we will mount this kind of sensor this sensor is cls sensor we will mount that on the steering column then again we will fix the steering wheel now this cls is standing for capacitive level sensor this once you are rotating this particular steering wheel this will generate certain capacitance and that will be uh, converted or maybe calibrated in the form of a load that this much load has been received so in that particular way you can find out that this much effort is required in order to steer the vehicle at the initial days so a lot of effort was required because you were using mechanical steering system then it was gradually been reduced with the help of a hydraulic based steering system nowadays in most of the car you will find that almost least effort is required in order to steering vehicle because we are using the electrical steering system right which has been widely used but that effort part can be checked with the help of this kind of uh, capacitive level sensor now let us understand the effect of weather on the vehicle performance part let us take two weather conditions for the comparison purpose let us come to the main point we are having two major seasons that is a winter season and the another one is a summer days right we naturally think like that in the summer we apply a ac so naturally the efficiency of vehicle would be reduced but this is not only the main point apart from that there are certain parameters which is affecting a lot the first thing is the density of air if you find that in the case of winter the and density of air is very higher air is very dense right so a lot of drag force is required in order to overcome that air resistance right so that will lower down the mileage of the vehicle whether in the case of summer the density of air is very less so naturally the drag force would be even less so in the case of uh, winter the another scenario is a lot many of time you will face that the tire becomes under inflated right in this case of summer that scenario would be less apart from that 
the major point that the starting point of the engine you will face a cold starting in the case of winter whether in the summer days the best operating temperature of engine would be achieved very soon so you will getting start getting better mileage at very fast instance as compared to the winter right so this is the major key differences between the summer and the winter driving condition now let us have a look towards the last topic that is the traffic condition driving skill effect on the vehicle performance part we are taking this both terminology together but if you focus a lot on the traffic condition and the driving skill it is having a huge effect these are the five terminology you need to keep on the mind that accelerate gently maintain a steady speed you need to uh, anticipate the traffic you travel loss towards that area in which the traffic is high avoid high speeding and you whenever you are decelerating the vehicle you are lowering down the speed of the vehicle don't try to apply this brake if it is not required just try to decelerate gently right but the major aspect is you need to drive at a very constant speed then only you can achieve a better speed it has been said that say for example if you are driving in a constant speed of 60 km per hour speed then you will achieve a better mileage but if you are having fluctuation of plus or minus 5 km per hour of speed that is you are driving in a range of 55 to 65 right and that speed duration change duration is at every 18 second even then also it is reducing the mileage by directly towards 10 percentage from what you are getting right so that can have a huge impact you need to improve that particular driving skill if you are focusing a lot on that particular thing you can achieve a better mileage and we all know that a traffic condition is affecting the vehicle performance so we need to anticipate the that particular routes in which the traffic is higher right so we are keeping up to this and the end of the fourth chapter finally thanks for watching